In this video, I'll show you how you can build your own table of contents menu using advanced actions and variables. I've been using this uh, particular uh, interaction now for a few different projects for various clients. And uh, in one of my recent videos, um, I kind of revealed that I was doing something like this and one of the viewers pointed out that they would love to know how this works. And I debated whether I was going to share this one because I'm particularly proud of this particular interaction. But I thought, you know, why not? The Adobe eLearning community is all about sharing and I'd like to do my part. And uh, so here it is. Uh, let's take you through this today. So as you can see on this, uh, this first slide in my course, I have a set of objects that appear as a table of contents menu. Now this is a grouped object. If you take a look at my my timeline here, you can see I have a grouped object and it's called table of contents group. And within it are a whole bunch of different smart shapes. Now some of these smart shapes actually perform the function of just being the the square itself or rectangle itself. There's a collapse square or icon if you will which I will assign the uh, the uh, advanced action to toggle this whole uh, table of contents on and off. There's the title of the project here and there are in this particular instance six smart shapes which I'm using as buttons that will navigate to the first page of all the main topics within this particular project. Uh, there's a, of course, I've got a, a toolbar here, if you will, where the very top item is this hamburger menu, and that's what triggers the display of this table of contents. So if you don't like the table of contents that's built into Adobe Captivate, or let's say you have a client who has a particular need for the table of contents to perform a particular function or or to include additional information perhaps, this is a way you can, you can achieve that. Now, when I'm actually working on my course, this becomes problematic because of course, I've set the timing for the entire grouped object to display for the rest of the project. So I, it's one of these things that you build it once and you put it on your first slide and it's effective, including all these toolbar buttons and especially the table of contents button will appear for the rest of the project. And of course, now if I need to edit this slide, that becomes problematic. So the easiest solution, in addition to the, um, the table of contents object being not visible in output, you also want it not visible on your stage. So you can actually, uh, underneath the icon for uh, show or hide all items, you can actually put a slash through that and hide it so that you can build the rest of your course. But for right now, we'll keep it open because we need to do a few things to it. So all of these, uh, as I indicated, all of these are buttons or they're smart shapes being used as buttons and they will simply navigate to the various other uh, sections of the course. Now I could simply have a jump to slide for these particular modules, but I want to make sure of a couple of things. So instead, there's an advanced action for each one of these. Let me show you a sample of one here. Now this advanced action will do two things in addition to jumping to the appropriate slide. It's going to hide that table of contents group because we want every time that you click something, whether it be a next button or one of these uh, module buttons, we want to hide the table of contents. Incidentally, how we keep track of the state of that table of contents menu is through a variable that in this case I've called v underscore custom underscore toc underscore open. I know it seems like a complicated name for, in this case, a variable, but keep in mind I wanted to design this course so that other users in the future could update it and so on. So I want to give very descriptive meanings or titles for all my variables and of course all my objects and grouped objects as well. So this variable simply stores either a value of zero, which means that the table of contents slot or, or object is closed, or a value of one if it's open. So 
all of these jump to module buttons include these two additional commands, and that's why we needed advanced actions for those. Incidentally, all my next buttons throughout the entire course do something very similar. So I wrote a, a simple advanced action for the next and the back buttons, and that includes those two additional commands as well. So even though I could have just simply used go to next slide, by including these two additional commands of hiding the table of contents group and assigning the value back to zero of my variable, I accomplish uh, the ability to have an interface that truly will respond the way users expect it to. So rather than simply go to next slide, I have a go to next slide advanced action that I use as well. So that's pretty much it for the basics. Let's show you how the advanced action that's going to toggle the, the menu works. And that's going to be triggered by two buttons, actually. The first one is this smart shape that I'm using as a button. Now I've created an, an additional state for it. In addition to the rollover and the down state, I have a menu open state. And when the menu is open, I'm going to have it glow green to allow users to know that the menu is open or to make it very clear that this has been activated. The other thing I have here, of course, is a small little icon in the menu itself that looks kind of like a collapse feature. And really all that I do there is I'm going to assign the same advanced action, that same toggle advanced action, which we'll write in a moment here, uh, so that people can close it using that control as well, because that's a natural uh, control that people expect to see uh, on a table of contents feature like this. So let's get started creating that advanced action. We already have the variable in place, and that variable has a default value of zero, and we'll be using that variable in this advanced action. So we're going to go to our Actions tab here. Currently there's no action associated with that, that table of contents menu button, but we're going to create it right now. So we're going to select uh, execute advanced actions and we'll click on the advanced actions icon and we'll start to build this new advanced action here so it's a conditional action in other words we're going to look at that variable and see its current state to decide which set of actions we're going to run so let's do that so we're going to call this one toggle underscore toc and that's pretty self-explanatory. So if we're going to look at that variable, and to make things easy, if you name all your variables with the same prefix, in this case I'm using v underscore, it makes it very easy to find all your variables. So we'll just select that. And we're asking, is this variable equal to, in this case, the literal value of the literal value of zero. In other words, is the table of contents closed presently? And if it is, we want to show that group. So we select the show command. And again, because we we have this already grouped together, I just need to select that group. Incidentally, there's a fake table of contents for a help screen that I've created for this course as well. We don't want to select that. We want to select the actual table of contents. Now, we also need to change the state of our button so that we can indicate to users that the menu is open. So we're going to choose the command to change state of, and in this case here, we're going to choose the name of the button, and that is open. TOC, that's what I've called that object. Again, it's really helpful to, to name all of your objects uh, within a course because it makes it easier when you're writing advanced actions to find them. So we're going to choose menu open. That's the state that I've created for just this circumstance. Now we also need to change the value of this variable. So we're going to use the assign command. And we're going to choose that, again, that variable with a value now of 1. So we're letting the system know that the table of contents is open. Now, 
In this case, we want some else commands as well. And else commands basically address the question if the table of contents is equal to one already, what do we want it to do? So we're going to add those. We're going to now hide our table of contents. There it is there. We're going to change the state of our button to reflect that the table of contents is now closed. So we'll put that back to normal. And again, we need to update the variable itself. So we're going to assign the variable with a value of zero or back to zero, if you will. And that's our advanced action. It's not that complicated. So really what it does is it just asks the question, what's the current state of the table of contents? If it's zero, in other words, closed, show it, change the state of the button, and update the variable with a value of one. If that variable or the current state of the table of contents is open, close it, in other words, hide it, change the state of the button back to normal, and then assign a value of zero to keep track of the current state. So we'll save this as an action. And let's make sure we assign it to the appropriate button. So here we've got, you know, the, the first choice that's available in our list of advanced actions. Now we're just going to select toggle TOC. We're going to also grab this button here because we want it to do the same thing. And we'll just go to actions, execute advanced actions. And once again, select toggle. TOC. So I think we're pretty much good to go here. Let's test this out. We'll just do a preview in HTML5. So here we are on our opening slide. Let's test out the table of contents button. It's got a nice rollover effect there. There it is. So we can, of course, now have the rollover effects for all the buttons there. Let's try module two. We'll jump to that. And of course, the simple fact of, of going to module two also closes your table of contents. Let's open the table of contents and click our next button here. That will close the table of contents as well. And of course, we can use the collapse button to do the same thing as well. And again, it's just a toggle, so it will keep working for as long as the course is available. Remember, of course, that the menu itself is visible for the rest of the course, the rest of the project. So it doesn't matter what slide you're on, this, uh, this table of contents menu will work on any slide for the rest of that uh, particular project. Guys, if you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to always create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.